Well, welcome to St. Thomas's Church in Ryde. Beautiful seaside town on the north coast. Most people will know it for its pier and its hovercraft. But really, for nearly 200 years, St. Thomas's was the centre of the community. Now missing its spire. And for the last 20 years, disused or unused. But part of the new project for Network Ride with Ride Town Council is to turn this into a church for the 21st century. Welcome to St Thomas's Church in Ryde on the uh, lovely north coast of the Isle of Wight. This is a special project. Uh, it's a project I came out of retirement for. Um, we're now looking at a lovely church building. Uh, this building we're sitting in at the moment was built in 1829. Uh, by the player and the Brigstock families. It was a private church. It was built on the foundations of the previous St Thomas's Chapel, which goes back to 1719. As a very busy and bustling part of the community, we are located right in the centre of Ryde, but was actually um, fell out of use in 1959 and was delisted. Since that time, it's been a heritage centre, a museum. It's been a community centre and exhibitions but for the last 15 years it's been pretty much unused uh, as with a lot of buildings the roof failed and we had an awful lot of water ingress problems and, and to be perfectly honest the future of the building looked very very poor. Bought last year by Ride Time Council uh, with a very ambitious and superb project because this is going to be and I've dubbed it a church for the 21st century and this will be open seven days a week and it will provide a safe and secure place. It will survive over here, um, kitchens, so they can make a meal and be taught to cook. At the back there, there are going to be new uh, toilets and shower facilities, washing facilities, drying facilities. Uh, here behind me, there'll be um, new, well, I call them officers, but the technical term is pods. These will be rooms for one-on-one -on -one counselling and safe rooms. The thing I love about this project is this building will come back alive. Um, it's going to be rewired and replumbed, and we've just completed the roof to make this, the place dry. So what I love about this project the most is it's going to be a possibly unique combination of old and new. This is a 200-year-old church. The stained glass windows here were installed in 1884. They're going to be taken out, completely rebuilt, cleaned, repaired and reinstalled. There's over 74 plaques, some of them extremely historic and rare, um, are going to all be sympathetically cleaned, conserved and left in place. So this project is going to walk the line between Grade 2 listed heritage and a church for the 21st century. And really what you see here is fantastic combination. On the Isle of Wight we have over 60 churches. Sadly many of them now either locked up, disused and indeed being sold for housing. So this is a project to bring this back alive but still be able to save so much of the history and heritage. And don't forget we are still in consecrated ground. We have the, the large graveyards, there are uh, burials here and the crypt has uh, 16 of the original builders of the church, the Brigstocks, the players underneath, and even earlier, the um, uh, catacombs under this side of the building. So it is, it is still a place of, I guess, reverence, if that's the right word, but it's also gonna come alive. And the pews behind us, which are 200 years old, they're going to become a center for teaching computers and internet and for gaming the kitchen on my left hand side for teaching and, co and cooking and allow people to make a drink. Uh, what was the original, the, the rooms for the, um, the vicar and co, if that's the right word again, where it's now been, going to be converted to showers and toilets. So people will still be able to come here and see the heritage and indeed upstairs, which is still largely intact, um, as it would have been a hundred years ago, is simply going to be restored. All the pews are going to be washed down with distilled water and given them two coats of restoration wax. We will repair the ceilings, it's going to be rewired, and we're going to redecorate, again in synthetic colours from the 1829 palette, uh, with a new floor. And as I say, 80, 100, probably 130 children will be able to come here on a, on a daily basis with experienced, trained uh, and, and 
qualified staff, they're lovely people, and it's going to be a real asset to the community. Well, we've come upstairs in St Thomas's Church in Ride. You got a lovely view. Um, now, strangely enough, this is the best view in the house, in my view, but these would have been the cheap seats because there are no pews. This is where the ordinary people would have come together to uh, watch the uh, service below. All the pews set around, um, sat there, but they've still got their order of services. Some of them stuck to the wall there. These date from the 1880s. The lovely features and um, parts of the church that we're going to conserve, preserve. Now, we're not going to let the children up here for network ride, but this makes a, a great area to become a heritage centre. So around here, in the, uh, in the alcove, we're going to put together a history of the church with its place in the community of Ride. We've recovered, as we've cleared out in the church, an awful lot of loose artifacts and plaques, and, and they're all gonna be mounted in here. Um, and of course, above me you can see part of the problems, the water ingress, the damage, has caused a lot of issues. We've now got the place watertight, so all this has gotta come down and be replaced, but that's, in the scheme of things, just part of the job. There's one thing I must show you though, and this is unique in any English country church. But what you'll notice over here are a whole series of pews, but they're children's pews. Look how small they are. And this is a, a little special feature. It needs cleaning and it needs conserving, but this is the teacher's pew. And you might notice one thing about it. It faces in the wrong direction because his job, and it would more likely have been a man back in the 1830s, 1840s, was to watch the children behind you and not watch the service. Well, as we were clearing through the church, little things come to light which people have passed by. So just down here on the left is the original church funeral briar. So on this bench is which all the coffins were sat here if they were laid in state or laid in mourning and again by the grove side. Just a simple wooden bench. It goes back to 200 years. It would normally just have a cloth draped on it. Um, people would look at it and not even realise, but to me that's a piece of history. Again, it would be gently conserved and put here because just imagine the history that's had. In fact, the, the bry here would have been um, brought out to every funeral in the graveyard here after 1830. The coffin would have sat on there by the graveside and then before you were lowered into eternal rest. It is part of the history of this church, it's part of the fabric of this church. It'll stay here, and it'll be conserved, and people will get to know what it's all about. Originally St Thomas has had a... I'll take a seat in the children's pews. We actually have quite a good view. <laughs> I like that. Um, there's been no children sat here for, I imagine, a hundred years. But Bridgley St Thomas has had a very large spire. Today it's just a tower, spire taken down in the 1890s. But through the left here we do have a historic clock, which is about to come out and be restored. And you can still access the tower. <laughs> One of the little features is the ladder fell down, so we're replacing that. But you have a view of the clock there, which is going to come out with a copper face to be replaced and restored as part of this project over the next, well, we're hoping it's going to take a year. Well, what I think is special about this project is it's just not a, another building project. Although I work on a lot of different historic buildings, this, because it, it was a church for 160 years, because it has plaques and burials and it's part of the fabric of the town of Ryde and indeed the, the fabric and history of the Isle of Wight. We still get people come in to see the plaques, there are some Royal Navy plaques, um, plaques to well-known people in the, in the history of the Isle of Wight. So everything we do here has to be done sympathetically and carefully, not just because it's a grade two listed building, because it was a place of worship, it was a church, it was it is still consecrated ground. So we have to always look at that. And on the other hand, of course, it's going to have a new life into the 21st century as a special hub, place of safety, and, and should I say sanctuary for the, the children of the next 20 or 30 years. <laughs>